I'd first like to welcome um, Mr. Brent Calloway, Performance uh, Director of EXOS, and Jen, who is uh, his teammate and team partner. Hello. <laughs> I would also like to welcome uh, Mr. Gregory Leach, who is the Managing Director of uh, Agility Sports, and his entire team. Um, welcome as well to staff of uh, the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, there's some high performance coaches here and uh, some uh, gym instructors as well and persons who are involved in high performance sport at the university. I'd also like to recognize all the other academic staff and members of the university and the university staff here. Most importantly, the students of the University of Trinidad and Tobago. A warm welcome to each and every one of you. This morning, I felt it important for us to engage Mr. Callaway. He's here for a short period in time, of time in Trinidad, and I thought it fit for us to have this opportunity shared with many of you. We are striving at the university to enhance our high performance program and our sport programs. And this morning, I think he will share some insights in terms of what he does and in terms of the education and the information behind high performance sport. But before I introduce him, I would like to call on UDT Strength and Conditioning Coordinator, Mr. Ronald Rogers, to give you know, some opening remarks and, and a little bit of a background into this entire initiative this morning. Mr. Rogers. Good morning, all. Um, I just want to, given the circumstances under which we found ourselves today, I just want to thank everyone for making the effort for being here. Um, as Darren would have told you, I'm the Strength and Conditioning Coordinator for the University of Trinidad and Tobago. And as a result, it is incumbent upon me to ensure that I get to you at all times the best information possible so that we as a unit can ensure that we are heading in the right direction. Um, in my capacity, it was necessary for me to attempt to procure equipment um, for the department. As such, I came into contact with Graham and um, he was able to inform me of this company, the Venti, that they are embarking upon. As fate would have it, having done some courses with Exos, it was an ideal opportunity once Brent and his team was coming here to get him to impart on you some of the information that I have been fortunate to receive over the years. Gregory, who is um, in the same field that I'm in Trinidad, has also been um, to EXOS doing their mentorship programs. And what I want is, as we go forward, to see how we can form a long-term partnership with EXOS Agility Sports so that at all times, we would be best placed in Trinidad and Tobago as, and the Caribbean basically as the forefront university in terms of high performance. Um, once again, I just want to say thanks for being here. Thanks to Dr. Dalloway for ensuring that um, he afforded you the time to absorb as much as you can. I encourage you to take notes, ask questions, become a sponge this morning and absorb as much as you can. Thank you very much and at the same time I want to recognize um, my high performance coaches and all who are involved. Thank you very much. Thank you Mr. Rogers. Uh, the exciting part of today is obviously the presentation by Mr. Calloway. Uh, but before I introduce him, I'd like to call on Dr. Dolloway to bring some remarks uh, before we start. thank everybody for, for making the effort to be here this morning, Mr. Brent Calloway and his team. Um, in, in Trinidad and Tobago, we know what's the current climate with regard to strength and conditioning. I mean, in many of our classes, we discuss it over and over. We, we realize we need, we are not where we're supposed to be, right? Now, we are trying to tailor educational programs in such a way 
that we can lift or, 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 or bring the carry level right up. And also opportunities like this when we get guys like Mr. Brent Caller and his team to come in, we welcome these opportunities because we need you guys to see, hear, and experience what, the, what, what we have also on the outside. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, normally we'd have to pay large amounts of money to travel abroad, to go to conferences, right, and meetings to hear these guys speak. So now when they're here, we have to welcome and take those opportunities, right? Learn as, learn as much as we can, ask as many questions as possible, please. Don't just sit there because I know there are many of you here that want to get into that field and have a great passion for that field. Right? And this is a great opportunity that's provided for you here today. Right? So it's, it, it, it will be a great stepping stone for you guys. Right? Mr. Mr. Ka Mr. Calloway comes highly recommended. Right? We, I'd like to thank also Mr. Rogers, right? Mr. Roger, because he was the one that really spearheaded that movement. So we he has a, a lot of experience throughout the world, right? Has worked on many of the major continents across the world, both Mr. Rogers and Mr. Calloway on his team. Right? So we want to really absorb as much as we can to. Okay guys? Well, good. Right. So don't remember I said don't be afraid to ask questions. Right. Thanks very much, uh, Dr. Dolloway. All right. Um, just to give you a little bit of an uh, insight as to who Mr. Brent Calloway is, he's a performance director international and a director with 12 years of expertise in human performance, strength, speed, and multi-directional ability, coaching elite athletes on the intricacies of human movement across a broad spectrum of sports, including baseball, football, track and field, tennis, boxing, and soccer. In addition to performance coaching, his strengths include public speaking, media interviews, on-camera coaching, demonstrations, and educational sessions with sport coaches. As an international performance director, he has overseen all international performance staff for EXOs, which are responsible for the following. The Chinese Olympic Committee, the 10 teams, Shanghai Research Institute for Sports Science, Los Angeles Galaxy USA, Everton Football Club UK, Galatasaray FC Turkey, uh, Argentina Pumas Rugby US National Soccer Team, is delivered education to sport coaches and other performance coaches in the following countries, USA, China, Germany, Turkey, Taiwan, Mexico, Japan, Brazil. So he comes with a wealth of experience. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Brent Calloway. Thank you very much. Well, thanks guys. Thanks for everybody for being here and, and uh, braving the traffic this morning. Uh, first, I want to tell you that uh, I am not a professor, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. Okay? So by me saying I'm a strength and conditioning coach, that means if I see you fall asleep, we'll all have to do push-ups. <laughs> That's what strength and conditioning coaches use, they use, right, for to wake everyone up, either some push-ups or uh, uh, some squat jumps or something like that. So, And I usually look for the smallest person possible to demonstrate the push-ups too. So if the small girls fall asleep, I feel very sorry for all of you. All right? Uh, I, I'm very excited to be here in, uh, in Trinidad. It's actually my first time in Trinidad. I've been in Tobago, so very close by in 2012. One of my, uh, one of my wife's very good friends is from uh, Port of Spain, and uh, she got married in, in uh, Tobago. So we were fortunate enough to, to be able to go there. But this is my first time in, uh, in Trinidad, and I'm, I'm very excited by that. The first question that I have for you guys, and I know that uh, um, Everyone that's been up here so far has said ask questions, and I'm going to start off by just having you answer questions. So you actually don't have to even think very much about anything in the beginning, because it's early and I understand that. How many people here are athletes, current athletes? Good. Okay, how many people here are studying strength and conditioning or human performance? Okay. How many people are interested in, in science or in, in studying science and human movement? Anyone? Good. And then coaches? High performance coaches? A few. Okay, good. So what we're going to talk about so far uh, today is, is basically what our company is, what Exos is, and then how we utilize different tools in order to make athletes better at what they do and better at their sport. 
So it's, it's a big thing for us, uh, for professional athletes, Olympic athletes, uh, and, and basically all high performance to, to get better at what they do, you know, to, to have a better career, to win more medals uh, at the Olympic Games, to, uh, to win World Cup championships. Uh, these are the things that our company has really been fortunate to be able to help provide for athletes across the globe. We were uh, very fortunate to be able to work with the Chinese Olympic Committee, as uh, Mr. Ganga said, and, and be able to help service them in getting ready for the 2012 Games. Uh, during the 2012 Olympic Games in London, the athletes that we coached were able to win 26 gold medals, uh, which is a, a, a very big standard for us. And if, uh, if our athletes had been their own country at the Olympic Games, they would have finished fifth in the medal count overall. Uh, so for us, that was, a, that was a big win. The World Cup that was just in Brazil, we coached the, the German national team for that. That's a team that we've been involved with uh, for the last probably seven years. So they are immersed in our system of performance as well. Uh, and it's a, it, that's a, a very unique culture that is, uh, the German culture is, is very strong rooted in rules and systems. And it's, it's one that is very highly organized. So our company is also very highly organized. So it was a very good marriage. And that showed itself in, in a World Cup championship. So my job with Exos is to basically manage anything that we have internationally. Any programs that we staff internationally, any teams that we service internationally, uh, that's, that's my job to go out and find the best coaches in the world, the best nutritionists and physical therapists in the world, and put them on site, teach them the systems, and then have them implement those throughout the, uh, throughout the world, throughout the globe. So before we start anything else, I've got a, uh, a couple of uh, videos that I wanted to show you guys that will give you just a, a small example of who we are and what we do, and then once you have that, we can go on and talk about the rest of the material. So Exos is, as a company, was founded about 12 years ago and based in Arizona in the United States and we now have facilities all across the US and um, starting to branch out as I said internationally so we'll start off with this quick video here we started as a refuge for athletes in an industry that didn't exist yet we did more than create a company we created an entire category with our first world-class facility in Tempe, we surrounded ourselves with the absolute best people from every different discipline, developing proven solutions to upgrade human performance. But that was just the beginning. Let me show you how great I am. We set out to maximize the potential of our athletes and to break the mold of conventional training, helping them achieve nearly every accolade in sport along the way. And the Giants have won! success with athletes led to the next phase of our evolution. Activating our programs all over the world. Starting with the military and special forces. And delivering breakthrough solutions to individuals and the most forward-thinking organizations. Because you don't have to train like a professional athlete to be supported like a professional in your everyday life. We're using cutting edge techniques to empower all those we touch today and into the future. From our partnerships with industry leaders to developing innovative programs and products of our own. If it didn't exist, we created it. Technology has finally caught up with our vision. We want to change the way people view proactive health. The breakthroughs we're making every day are enabling better lives. It's our responsibility to keep blazing the trail to a brighter future. We are pioneering human performance. So this is who we are as a company, and the, the gentleman that you saw speaking with the flat top is our, our founder, Mark Verstegen. 
um, and, and Mark is a uh, truly the engineer of the space that we work in. So he said in that video, you know, we didn't just start a company, but we invented a category. And he's, he did that, truly. Um, beginning in probably the mid-90s, there was a company called the International Performance Institute. Has anyone ever heard of IPI? Very good, yeah. So it uh, was founded in Florida, and uh, IPI, as a, uh, as a company, basically was built to service athletes, professional athletes, and be a sports school for a lot of athletes. Uh, so Mark was, uh, was hired to run that organization and be the chief performance officer. What he ended up doing was uh, bumping into some headaches with the, uh, with the administrative staff and some other things. So he said, you know what, I can do this on my own and do it uh, in a much better way. So he founded, at that time, a company called Athletes Performance. And Athletes Performance was born in the late 90s and then uh, from there began to, uh, to get bigger as it went. And his goal was, as he said in the video, to be a refuge for professional athletes. So as a professional athlete, during the season, you're with your team, right? So you're training with your team, you're practicing with your team, you're playing with your team. But when the season's over, most of those athletes in the United States were returning back home and then sitting on the couch or having to find a, a strength coach or a personal trainer in order to take them through sessions or go to the local high school or back to their college in order to train. And he wanted to give them a place where these athletes could go and, and make that their home. So not only would you have strength and conditioning coaches there, but you would have speed coaches there. You would have massage therapists to take care of the body, nutritionists to be able to talk to you about how to eat and how to recover well. Uh, you would have physical therapists there to help you deal with injuries and help you do what we call prehabilitate injuries. So detecting potential injuries in the future depending on how your body is built, and then combating those issues before they occur. So basically prolonging your career, improving your productivity, and making you a better athlete is what it was really built on. So with that in mind, our company started to build a few more facilities here and there, and then we started to be outsourced by professional teams as we started to have success. So in 2008 is when I came on board with Exos. I've been involved in, in the strength and conditioning world since uh, 2003 at this point. And I was a um, collegiate track and field athlete. I was a pole vaulter in track and field uh, at the University of North Carolina. So I knew I always wanted to go into speed coaching, strength coaching. I knew that would be my avenue into coaching. Um, and it led me toward athlete's performance at that time. So when I was hired, I was number 74, employee 74. I was the 74th person on the team. As of this year, we have over 2,500 people on our team now. So it's grown very big, very quickly. So and as he was talking about on the video, not only do we work with just athletes, but we also work with corporate wellness companies, big corporate wellness divisions. Um, we have facilities inside of companies like Google, uh, LinkedIn, Walgreens, major companies will hire us in order to improve the health and performance of their employees as well. And then we have a, a very large division that works with uh, U.S. military. So trying to make our military athletes as strong and uh, resilient to injury as possible. So that's who we are as a company. And after talking about that, we also have to look at sports science. So, at any given moment, thousands of gifted athletes. So, any good thought or philosophy or process is always going to start with a scientific basis, right? We can't just have a concept and expect for a concept to deliver the results that we wanted to deliver without being able to prove that through science. Correct? We right? Okay. I got some head nods. That means whoever just nodded saved you all push-ups. Okay. So with that and with the, the sports science portion in mind, we have a full part of our company that's dedicated toward researching, finding out true strategies that give success, and then how do we implement those 
inside of our spectrum of athletes and our spectrum of specialists. Uh, so our sports science section is very important to us. I'll show you a quick video on that. This will take about five minutes. At any given moment, thousands of gifted athletes and teams are working to become the next champion. At Exos, we've had the great honor and responsibility to support the leading global organizations throughout the world of sport without losing focus on winning day to day. In state-of-the-art facilities, top tiers of the U.S. military, forward-thinking Fortune 500 companies, and embedded within teams worldwide, exceptional athletes and organizations of all stripes are working with the most advanced analytics and data to push their limits. It comes down to sports science. In today's world, to stay ahead of the competition, teams must evolve the way athletes prepare, fuel, train, and recover. That's what we pride ourselves on here at Exos. We look forward to serving you and bringing that vision to life in the near future. For every tenth of a second shaved off a 40-yard dash, every additional rep, every unexpected comeback, every major injury avoided, there are thousands of hours in research and development that went into it. Today, the most dominant teams are quantifying performances in the development process. Every facet of preparation can use data to optimize training and ultimately greatly improve game day results. It's called Performance Analytics, an integrated data system that's customized for each team and even each athlete on that team. So we finally had a capacity to take the perceptions of what the coaches saw and what they felt the athletes needed to do, map that against a unique athletic profile, allowing us to optimize the athlete's ability to improve their performance, all the while decreasing the risk of injury. Whether it's sleep analysis, mindset focus, fuel planning, movement efficiency, or other performance metrics, programs evolve as the athletes evolve. their mental efficiency. Great nutrition is more than just having a few healthy options in the post-game spread. Helping athletes realize their performance through maximized nutrition means the athlete needs to understand their individual nutrition needs and how it relates to their performance in the field of play. Matching an individual athlete's needs with an amazing culinary environment will make sure your team stays on the cutting edge of performance nutrition. Today, focused mental preparation coupled with physical and nutritional development turns gray teams into champions. Whether mental or physical development, meals, supplements, and hydration power every aspect. Optimum fueling integration best happens with a team and individual in their natural environment. Happening both outside the walls of a training facility and within, recovery remains a critical element to any comprehensive athletic program leading to dramatically improved performance. Sleep analysis and proactive planning are changing the game in both training environments and live competition. Redefining the limits of human performance 
athletes are returning from injuries at new levels while minimizing the risk for repeat. I knew this was a place for me coming off the injury, like as not only from a performance standpoint, but from a rehab standpoint as well. And in my rehab, I feel awesome. I feel better than I did before I got hurt. Data-driven and action-oriented, Exos is the team behind the world's best organizations and most elite athletes. Through detailed analytics and evaluation, they are your team's force multiplier, transforming sports science and turning hard numbers into medals and championships. This is what pioneering human performance is all about. This is how Exos is powering a new evolution of the elite athlete. Exactly what you thought you were going to hear when you came in today, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. So, this is not, this is not your old traditional strength and conditioning program, right? It's something very different than that. Sleep science? What strength conditioning coach is talking about sleep science, right? This is something that's different. We're talking about nutrition, recovery. You saw all of the unique tools that are in there, the data collection. This is very different than what the old, let's just get on the bench press, do a lot of bench press and a lot of squats has been in the past. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is talk to you guys about how our methodology works. What, uh, what are we putting into it? And how does that affect athletes across the board? Before we start, do we have any questions? Anything? Okay. All right. So if you are taking notes, this is a good spot to really start jotting some things down. So what we have up here is our mission statement. When our company was founded in the 90s, our goal was to provide the finest performance systems, specialists and facilities, seamlessly integrated to efficiently and ethically enhance our athletes' performance. Now I mentioned that the company that was founded was called athlete's performance when we started, correct? We changed the name at the beginning of 2014 in January to Exos. And the reason that we did that was because our company has spread across so many different spectrums and audiences that no longer was it just held to athletes. We had, as you saw, we have corporations and employees. We had uh, military officers that were training with us and and it, it was no longer just athletes so we had to get out of having athletes as our only name in, inside of the title of our company so we changed the name to exos and exos is basically short for exosphere so exosphere meaning the outer protective layer of our environment right so anything inside of the exosphere is protected from space by the, by the exosphere. And what we wanted to be able to do is create and provide that protection for our athletes inside of our world. Okay, so looking at this just a second, we have to provide the finest system specialists and facilities seamlessly integrated. This is a key word right here, seamlessly integrated. That's a big component of what we do, seamless integration. What that means is that all of our services that we have, it's great to have all of those services, but if they don't tie together very well, and there's not a full picture that's created by all of those services, and if I have a nutritionist over here, I have to know exactly what that nutritionist is going to say, especially if I'm a strength coach, right? Those two work hand in hand. If I have a data collection analyst over here, I have to know exactly what data he's collecting so that I can use that data. If I have someone studying sleep or I have a physical therapist who's rehabbing an athlete coming off of injury, are all of those things important to me as a strength coach? Heck yeah, they are. They're very important. I have to have all of that info so that I can get my athlete as strong and as fast as possible. That's my job, right? I have to go out and blow the whistle and yell at athletes and put you down on the bench and get you underneath that squat bar with 400, 500 pounds on it in order to make athletes stronger and faster. That's my job. But I can't do that 
without all of the other knowledge that I have. See, I got, I got hype right there. I got a little bit excited. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down and go back into lecture mode. See? Okay, so seamless integration is very important. That means everything has to work together. Second, efficiently and ethically. I'm going to talk about this word first. Tell me, somebody, real quick, throw it out. What does that word mean? Throw it out there. Efficient. you got to say it. I'm going to wait for somebody to say it. <laughs> Say it louder. Effective. effective, yeah. Effective and quickly. We want it to be done very fast. So think about it this way. If we can make a bigger impact in a smaller amount of time, do we get better results? Bigger impact, smaller amount of time, better results, right? That's what we want to do. So all of our tools are built to be very efficient. Our methodology is built to be very efficient, okay? And then ethically. We're not breaking any rules. We're not breaking any rules, we're not breaking any laws. There is no, there is no illegal performance enhancement. There are no uh, positive drug tests. There's nothing like that that can exist in our world. Imagine if you were a professional athlete, you might be, but as a professional athlete, you come in and train with me, and I give you a protein shake at the end of the day, and I say, drink that, it's gonna make you better. You drink that protein shake, and then you go to the Olympic Games and you test positive for something that I gave you. Are you ever going to come back to me? And are you, as a professional athlete, ever going to come to me if he just tested positive for something I gave him? Absolutely not. Why would you? Right? So we can't ever have that happen. And because we can't have that happen, we trust only the highest grade of phar pharmaceutical uh, supplements that we can get. And we actually just started our own brand of supplements because we couldn't necessarily trust everyone else's supplements to be 100% impurity free. So instead of finding a, uh, you know, a, a, a general nutrition center, GNC, or you know, whatever supplement store is here in Trinidad, we actually had to go find a high grade pharmaceutical company and then contract them to make our supplements for us, putting in only the ingredients that we want and doing it in a very controlled, very clean environment so that we never have to worry about athletes testing positive. We never have to worry about athletes having sugar that they don't want or artificial sweeteners that they don't want. So we get to actually dictate what goes in there and it's 100% pure. That is our point of ethics. We want to be the best at everything that we do. And as Mark said in that video, if it's not out there, we'll invent it. So that's what our goal is with these things. We're trying to enhance and do whatever we need to do for our athletes' performance. If you come to us, you can realize that you can go to sleep tonight and sleep well and recover because I'm awake at night trying to think about how to make my athletes as strong and as fast as possible to play their sport and to be as good at their sport as possible. So in doing this, we're going to change our, our scope a little bit here. We're going to talk about systems versus methods. Okay, so this is a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. He's a, uh, a poet um, several hundred years ago. But he has a, a very wise quote. It says, as to methods, there may be a million and then some. But principles are few. The man who grasps principles can, sele can successfully select his own methods. But those who try methods, ignoring principles, sure to have trouble. Okay? Now let's think about what this means. As to methods, there may be a million and then some. Are there more than one way to do one thing? Yes. There are tons of ways to do one thing, right? Tons of ways. Now, inside all of those methods, there's a system to be found, which is what's going to give whoever is trying to do that one thing, the best possible results. So if you can understand principles, if you know how to run an offense in the game of soccer, the game of baseball, the game of basketball, cricket, whatever it is, if you understand the principles of the game, can you then inject your own ideas as to how we're going to make those principles work? Absolutely. Okay. Now, if you only know a few methods, a few drills, you might not be the best cricket coach. But if you understand what the entire map looks like, if you understand what the entire game looks like, then we can choose whatever drills we need in order to build our team. Does this make sense? Okay, so that is systems 
versus methods, principles versus methods. Think of a method as a tool. It's a way to do something. Okay? If I have a, um, you know, a screwdriver right here, I can put a screw into a piece of wood, I can hang a picture, I can do a few things like that. Okay? But I can't do everything with a screwdriver, so I might need a wrench. A wrench is going to expose me to, uh, to more success in creating more things from an engineering standpoint. I have to have tools because those are my methods. It's my procedure way of doing something. But what all those tools make up is my system. If I have that big toolbox, now I can do whatever I need to. And I can choose whatever tool I want to use based on what my system is calling for. All right? Very important for us. This is a coordinated body of methods that complete a singular or complex whole, right? We want to take all of these things and go, okay, this is our system. Now, what do we need to make this athlete better? I might need a little bit of strength training. I might need some injury rehab. I might need some nutrition because this athlete doesn't eat very well. Maybe he sleeps great. Maybe he takes care of his body. So I don't need those pieces. But if those are all of my methods, I can choose my methods based on what I need for each individual athlete. Our company has four individual pillars, and you see on my logo right here, you can tell I've been doing push-ups. <laughs> my logo right here, the X is four individual lines. Okay, and if you saw that on uh, our, our brand earlier, this is what those four individual lines mean. They represent four foundational pillars of our company. We basically looked at sports performance as a whole and said, what are the four most important pillars for us to build our structure on that we can find? And we came up with four, right? So you have movement. When we say movement, this is all human movement. This is running, jumping, cutting, lifting, turning, throwing, catching, whatever it is, whatever it involves, that is movement, okay? Recovery, obviously important. We have to get back to, to being healthy again. So the harder we train, does it make sense to recover less? No. The harder you train, the more you must recover. The smarter you train, the smarter you can recover. All those things go hand in hand and go together. Recovery is essential. Mindset. Do champions think a little bit differently than the average person? They do. They think a little bit differently. They measure things a little bit differently. Success is different in their mind. The way that they attack every day, the way that they attack every drill is a little bit different. Some of you may have had uh, people that you've worked with in the past, athletes on your team, you're like, yeah, that, that guy's special. He's a special athlete because his mindset is so different. I want to create a mindset like that. I want to be able to have that type of mindset when I attack things. Right? Some of you have had coaches like that too. Like, I don't know what coach is thinking, but I know he's a genius. So I've got to get on board with what coach is thinking. Okay? Nutrition. Nutrition is probably the number one limiting factor with making good athletes great. Think about that. Making, taking great athletes, let them eat poorly or suboptimally, and you've just taken a great athlete and made them good. That's a problem. Okay? Nutrition is a limiting factor. If you can fix nutrition in an athlete, you'll most likely clear up several of these things. I am not a nutritionist. I wish I was. I'm not a nutritionist, but the nutritionist in the facility is my best friend. I will go find that person every time and say, I need you. I need your services because we have to impact all of these kids, all these athletes, all these professionals, whatever it is. All of these soldiers, all these warriors, whatever it is. We have to impact them and we have to do it with the fuel that they're putting in their body. Okay. Now, if you think about a high performance race car. You can't take a high performance race car down to the local gas station and put unleaded gasoline in it that you buy for, well, where I live, it costs $3, but I live in California where everything's expensive. So you can't take a high performance car and do that. It has to have special fuel because the engine is built to be very special and churn out a lot of horsepower. That's important. As athletes, we also have to churn out a lot of horsepower, right? So we have to be able to put in specialized fuel 
that helps us not only move very powerfully, very quickly, very safely, very strategically, think very strategically and, and effectively, but also recover very well. We just had the Hunger Games go off in there. I thought everybody was like, going to go off in the second 12. I was about to duck and come back up with my bow and arrow. Y'all watch out now. You know I can get excited pretty easily, so be careful. Okay. In doing that, what we're going to talk about now for the rest of the day, we're going to kind of drop down into this category. Okay, so we're going to look at movement. I'm a movement coach. I'm a movement specialist. So we're going to talk about this. Now, when we're talking about a training system, we talk about our toolbox. You know, we have the picture of the toolbox, so we understand what a system is. This is what our daily system looks like for athletes. This is what they're going to go through. And again, we're going to do this very efficiently, so we're trying to get a lot of work done in a small amount of time. So the first thing that we'll do as a, who's an athlete? Raise your hand if you're an athlete in this room. Okay, good. What sport do you play? Say it. Basketball. Basketball. Great. Very good. You kind of got like a Kevin Durant thing going on anyway. <laughs> I can tell he has that. So, so, so when Durant comes into me, and, and he says, hey, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm a basketball player and I'm trying to get better. I play for the, for, uh, for the Trinidad national team. What are we going to do? Right? How are we going to figure out what works for this guy? I'm going to look at, number one, what are his sport demands? He plays basketball. So now I know the surface that he plays on. I'm going to find out what position that he is. Once I know that, I can break down the movements that he makes quite effectively. I can then look at what type of system does the team that he plays for play, right? I, I, uh, we've got the, the NCAA tournament going on in the United States right now. Does it, those games get played down here a little bit? Yeah. People watch that a little? So I went to the University of North Carolina. It was also another famous basketball player that went to the University of North Carolina. Slightly famous. Anybody know who it is? Michael Jordan. Come on. 23. <laughs> right? The famous basketball player. The one famous basketball player. Everybody should be able to name that one. So, in, in doing that, I watch a lot of North Carolina basketball games. Well, we happen to play very up-tempo, very fast style of basketball. That's what our coach likes to do. He likes to run. Well, we had a, a high school senior come into our program about two years ago named Kennedy Meeks. He's playing right now. Uh, Kennedy Meeks came in at 335 pounds. He was 6'10", 335 pounds. Okay? Played down low in the post. And the first thing the coach said was, you're going to have to lose 40 pounds before you can play. Because we're going to run up and down this court, and you're not going to be able to last. You won't make it. Okay? So what things like the things that I have to do are look at the sport demands, the team demands, the position demands, and go, if I have a 330-pound athlete, and I need to make that athlete, it was my energy. <laughs> if I have to make that athlete, be ready to play that type of offense, well, that's my job. I need to figure out the energy systems that that athlete uses, the fuel that that athlete needs in order to burn for two halves at full speed. Okay, I need to be able to give the athlete the body that he needs to play inside that offense because at 330 pounds, it's not going to last very long. He's going to get 15 minutes a game, and he's not going to be very effective. Okay? So, that would be the first thing that I do is look at the sport demands. The second thing over here is look at the athlete's abilities. What are they already good at? If they're already great at something, I'm not going to spend a lot of my time on it. That part of their toolkit is already very well established. So I have to figure out what they're not very good at. And then go back and see how does that play into their game? How does that play into their sport? How does that play into their event? And then if I can create a bigger avenue of success there, then we'll have, we'll have better athlete success overall. So as a, a track and field athlete, I was a pole vaulter. Um, and I always I blame my father and mother for this, but I was not the fastest pole vaulter ever. I wanted to be. I really wanted to be fast. And I told you, I blame my parents. It's like, hey, Dad, were you fast? He was like, no, nah, not really. I'm like, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, thanks for giving me you know, the heads up that I need in order to, to be fast, too. But uh, so what he did, he just made me run around the track a lot. So again, thanks, Dad. Yeah. You made me slow, and then you made me run a lot. But, but what I was able to do in that is get faster. I needed to get a little bit faster. 
Now, I'm not, I'm not going to be Otto Volpe, right? I'm not going to be that athlete who is, you know, a sub-10 sprinter. We know that's not going to happen. But I could get a little bit faster, and that uh, inevitably made me better at my event. So finding those things, finding out what are the keys to speed, how do you make an athlete faster, it's not just going out and running 200s and 100s and 60s and 50s and 40s and pulling sleds. There is a, a large component of underlying processes, strength, strength to body weight ratio, recovery ability, all those things come into what it takes to make an athlete faster for 50 meters, which is what I need. Okay? So looking at the athlete's abilities, what they're already good at, what they need to get better at, looking at the sports demands, then I can come up with a training program. The training program is designed amongst all of the things that you see below there. This is in a given session. Okay, so if you come to me, if Kevin Durant comes to me, I'm talking about you, not, not, not the real Kevin, but if, if, if he comes in to me, what are we going to go through? This is what we will go through in an hour and a half. Okay, and we'll talk about how this works and how it evolves. Each one individually across the board. Obviously, nutrition and mindset make up the difference between the training programs, all the uh, all of the key components that are there. So starting off, what we're basically doing is running down each one of these with an individual slide so I can talk to you about each one. Pillar preparation. This is our facility right here. This is actually my office right in there. I share that with three of my other colleagues and we can look straight out onto the training floor. And uh, Jen in the back, she works up in one of those offices right up there. So this is very close to home for us. We're not just showing you pictures of that, that is a random guy, but <laughs> some random guy that we paid to, to roll around on that thing inside of our facility. So, All right. So what we have here is the words pillar prep. It's what we call pillar preparation. What is a pillar? Foundation. Very good. A pillar is what you build a structure on top of, right? That gives strength to the entire structure. Now, the... There used to be, the, the word you hear a lot is core training, right? Core training. What do you think about when I say core training? So you can tell me about Abs. Abs. And in infomercials late at night, you see lots of people trying to sell products to make your abs look better. The abdominal muscle group is very vast. It's not just the rectus abdominis, which is just the six pack that you see right here. Okay, there are a lot of muscles, actually about 53 muscles total front to back all encompassing through here that make up your pillar. So we change from the word core to the word pillar because of what this gentleman just said right there, abs. It's not just about crunches. Okay? There are a lot more things involved than just crunches. So we have all the muscles of the back, all of the obliques, all the muscles of the glutes, right? This is the horsepower right here. All of the muscles of the hips front and back, all the muscles of the shoulders front and back. This is what makes up a pillar. If you basically took a mannequin in a store and you took the arms off and you took the legs off, you'd be left with a pillar. So we have to get very strong and very uh, prepared for the pillar to be able to lay the foundation and to be able to put strength on top of that. It's not just about making arms strong and legs strong. Everything has to originate from here and pass through here in order for our athletes to be great. If I'm planning to change the direction, if I'm cutting, putting my foot in the ground and taking off right there, when I engage the ground, I'm producing horsepower from my hip. I'm pushing down into the ground. We're in a science room right there. See what is science all over the place. I have ground reaction forces going down into the ground, so the earth actually pushes back against me. Equal, right? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So now I have all that force pushing on me. Well, where does it have to go? has to go all right back to this pillar so that I can go the direction that I need to. All right? All those things work together. So we have to prepare our pillar for competition, for training, for everyday life. Now what that means is sometimes we need stability. We need to be able to transfer force better. Sometimes we need mobility. So we need to be able to, to move through free range of motion better. Okay, this gentleman's foam rolling. One of these guys right here from Skills. He's foam rolling his lat, okay? Lat's a very strong muscle. It's actually one of the biggest muscles in the body. 
and it extends from the bottom of your skull all the way to your shoulders and all the way down to your hips. So when you see those guys turn around and hit that position right there, when they're modeling the, the uh, bodybuilding contest, right, they're pulling their lats out, they're flaring their lats out. Okay? So those lats right there are very strong for all pulling activities and stabilizing your body and keeping you upright. What happens when your lats get tight is that they pull you this way. That's why you see all those bodybuilders walking around on Cabro. <laughs> That's what they do in California, right? Say, bro, where's Jimmy? Well, their, their lats are so tight, they've actually pulled their spine into a position that causes problems right there. Okay? Your spine's not meant to be that way. You've just done too many rough bent over rows with too much weight, and now you've created a problem. So this guy's loosening his lats up. And what that's going to do is allow him to reach up at a higher rate. Lats attach right here. Okay. So if my lats are tight, my arm's going to stop right there. Everybody, sit up as tall as you can right now. Sit up as tall as you can. Sit up in your chair. You don't stand up. Yes, sit up. <laughs> they stood up. OK, I want you sitting up tall. So your low back is against the chair, right? I want everybody to press your low back into the chair. Put your arms out in front of you, just like this. Okay, you ready for this? Now, you're going to take your right hand while you're sitting up, press your low back into the chair. It's right there. I want you to take your right hand, slowly raise it up as high as you can. And if, it's, if it gets tight, you stop. If it doesn't get tight, straighten your arm out. Right there, good. Now, take your left hand and raise it up as high as you can. You have to relax. Okay, now I see some people, we got, we got some problems going on here. Okay, bring it back down. Good, now relax in the middle. You don't have to press your back out anymore. Now reach up as high as you can. See how much easier that was? Relax. Now, when you raise your hand up, just like that, if I didn't tell you to put your back on the bench, you, your back probably came off of the chair in order to reach up. So your body says, I want my hands to go up there. This rope, this muscle right here attaches and says, no, I can't go that far. That's why some of you raised your hand like this, right? This one has more mobility than this one does. So because of that, you were pressing your back onto the chair, so you stopped all movement from your pillow. Now when I said relax, oh yeah, I can reach up as high as I want. Because you just changed this, now you have lots of leverage. Okay, now you can move. Well, what does that do? It gives you the freedom of motion. But now it puts your spine in a position of a poor position in order to hold weight. So if you're pressing overhead and you don't have good lat mobility, where does all that force go? Yeah, right there. You guys knew that. You're all smart. You're smart. So we know right there we've already got issues in our low back. We've got problems in our low back. This is one of the reasons that this happens all the time, especially in America. Um, Old men changing light bulbs is one of the biggest issues for low back problems. Um, blown discs, or back spasms, anything like that. They get tight right here, and they reach up to change the light bulb, and they go, and they, they get stuck, right? Because their back, they don't have any range of motion anymore, versus being able to reach up without having to, to arch their back. So with pillar preparation, not just talking about lats, but it's individualized. So every athlete is going to have some specific mobility or stability issues. Everyone might not be as strong as they need to be right here. Some people might not be as mobile as they need to be. So we have to have targeted philosophies for each person. Sometimes I'm going to use the foam rolls. Sometimes I'll use our Acu rollers. Sometimes I'll use some trigger point balls. Sometimes I'm going to have to have some stability that I need to implement for athletes. So I might have them use some small tools in order to be as stable as possible. Stable just means I'm able to hold still like a rock and I don't have a whole lot of wobble back and forth. All of these are very individualized. Now, for my job, like I said, I coach athletes all over the world. And in doing that, what I've noticed is that athletes in different parts of the world grow up very different, right? In the US, most of our athletes start strength training very young, but we don't do anything in the form of stretching. Okay? We don't do much in the form of mobility at the, the high school level. 
So we end up with very strong, very immobile athletes. They can't move around very well, but they're strong. Okay? Now, because of that, we have to go back and work on a lot of mobility so that they can get range of motion back to move more effectively in sport. Now, in 2011, I went over to China and started working in China with Olympic athletes. And being in China, you know, they still have, that, that country has what we call a, a cultural demonstration of mobility. So they're all very, very mobile people. They don't have mobility problems. If you ask them to put their hands up, that demonstration that I did with you guys would be a bad one. Because everyone would say, I don't have a problem with that. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay? But what they do have a problem with is stability. Because their weight training philosophies were very poor. So we had to go back and re-engage that and teach them that. So every culture, every team, every sport, every athlete inside of every sport has to have an individualized targeted focus to figure out where each person is going to get better as fast as possible. Movement preparation. So step two is preparing the athlete to move for the session that we have, for the practice that we have. We used to call this warm-up. Warm-up, again, was a pretty standardized term. The second that I say warm-up to you, tell me what you think of when I say warm-up. Stretching, what else? Jogging, right? So you just hit the big two, well, let's jog and stretch. Okay, in fact, most coaches are gonna tell you, okay, jog and then stretch. Okay, let's go to work, right? So what we wanted to do is change the mindset from warm-up to preparing the body to move, or a movement prep session. Okay, so we'll target our movement prep session to what the movement is for the day. So we're either going to coach speed from a straightforward standpoint or a side-to-side -side standpoint. It's either agility work or straight-ahead speed work. So I have to prepare the athlete for whichever one of those we have that day. Okay, you see athletes right here using mini bands. Anybody ever use these before? Yeah, that's good. That's good. That means Ronald's doing his job. That means Ronald's working hard on teaching that teaching everybody how to use mini bands back there. So what are these athletes doing right here? What are they doing? Somebody tell me. Tell them. Push ups are coming if y'all don't tell me what's going on. Okay, what they're doing is taking their legs and they're gonna drop one in, pull it back up. One leg at a time and both legs. You guys have done that? Athletes here have done that, right? Do you know what you're doing when you do that? You're activating your glutes, right? So this bone right here, Somebody tell me what that bone's called. What's the name of that bone? Femur. femur. Good job. You get a bonus point. Good job. You got one bonus point. So your femur right here is controlled by your hip. Okay? Your glute. There's three big muscles back there that can comprise your glute complex. And one of the big jobs of that glute is to keep your femur out. All right? Now, if an athlete is trying to change direction or squat and has a leg fall in, we already know that this athlete is at high risk of injury and it's not going to have uh, quite as much efficiency or speed that they need to in that change of direction or out of it. So being able to stabilize the hip is very important. This is why you start off with this exercise before you do any training session. Because you are telling the brain, hey, I'm going to use these guys today. I have to turn my hips on. I have to activate my hips and your strength gains actually go up pretty substantially. They've done studies at uh, um, Cal State Fullerton, which is one of the universities I come in and talk to sometimes. They actually went through with EMG studies and found that after glute activation, athletes get about 22% more glute involvement in each movement that they go through. So with five minutes of work, we just got 20 more percentage of horsepower. I'll take that, right? I want for five minutes of work, I'm good. We're going to do that every day. We're going to do it for five minutes a day, and then we're done. If we train four days a week, that's 20 minutes a week based on glute activation, right? Let's go ahead and put that over four, four and a half weeks for a month. Now we've got a bigger bulk of time. If we put that over three months for an off season, now we've done a lot of glute work. So our hips are going to end up being very strong so that as an athlete goes back to sport, we've done everything that we need to in order for them to be very strong and efficient. Okay. Plyometrics. Next, we're going to talk about linking the weight room and the sport together. So we have to be able to 
create speed, create strength, and then explode that, straight, that strength and speed into a certain direction, and also land it, decelerate it. Deceleration is as important as acceleration is, being able to control your body when you land. Okay? We talked about linear acceleration and speed, so whenever we're talking about speed training straight forward, we've all watched the 100 meter dash in the Olympic Games, the first 60 yards is acceleration. It's your start in your acceleration zone, right? That's when those guys, they come out of the stands, pop, 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 and they're really putting down horsepower into the track to get as much speed going as possible. And then they go through all of that acceleration zone, they start to stand up slow, boom, and when they do, they end up in absolute speed position. So they're as tall as they can be in that spot, and now they're holding all of the speed and energy that they just created moving straight forward in order to hold a high level of speed and at the end run as fast as time as possible. So there are techniques inside acceleration in order to use your body more efficiently. And then there are also techniques inside of what we call the absolute speed phase. Some people call it a maximum velocity phase where you're actually trying to hold high speed as long as you can. Okay, well, that's great in track and field, right? We can practice those two things in track and field, but not every sport just runs straight forward, okay? We have cricket, we change a lot of directions in cricket, right? Basketball, we know we change a lot of directions in basketball. Most sports are multi-directional sports. Soccer, basketball, hockey, any sport where you have to change directions, <coughs> football. All these sports are multi-directional sports. Because of that, we have to learn how to change direction and be in good positions of acceleration and deceleration at all times. So we'll talk a lot about teaching an athlete how to shuffle properly, how to move one step at a time very efficiently and properly, how to cross over and sprint in a certain direction, or planting and changing direction. All of those things exist in sport and we have to coach them. Now after we finish all of our work on the field, then we have to come inside and go through our strength session. Now I get to make you lift. Right? That's the fun part for me. Now I get to put weight on the bar, put weight in your hand, and make you go through movement patterns. Movement patterns. Can somebody name a movement pattern to me? Anyone? This is a, kind of a tricky question. Anything? Squatting would be a movement pattern. <coughs> Lunging would be a movement pattern. Reaching, pressing, those are movement patterns. Okay? And you have to be effective and efficient in the way that you do those movement patterns or you end up, as some of our athletes did, like I talked to you about before, with what we call restrictions. An athlete who does a lot of bench press, never stretches out or loosens up his chest, maybe a lot of push-ups from when he was really young. His dad made him do push-ups the entire career that he's gone through. He's just built that habit. They end up changing their torso and changing their position because of tight muscles on the front. Right, so this has actually pulled them this direction, and now that changes how movement patterns happen. So if I'm batting in cricket, my swing pattern has changed, and the muscles that I use have changed because I've changed the posture of my body. That's a problem, and that actually happens quite a bit in the American <coughs> Institute now because all of our students live right here. This is where they spend all their time. And you get a job, and you go to work, and you sit at a desk, and you stay right here. And you wake up in the morning and you drive to work. And you get out of the car and you sit at your desk. And then you go home and you eat. Right? So now we have a problem that's created throughout our torso. So then you stand up and you go somewhere and you go, oh, I'm tired. You know? So this is a problem. And if we're trying to go through sport like that, we've got issues. So we have to look at how shoulders function, how the back functions, how hips function, what type of stability do you have. This is a pretty difficult exercise, right? I mean, look at this athlete. Straight leg in the back, straight through the torso, solid bent knees, it's called a single leg RDL, Romanian deadlift. He's got 35 pounds in each hand, so he's got 70 pounds in his hands right there. And he's going through a movement where he's going to move down in an effective position and balance, and then stand back up on one leg. If you've never done those before, you got about five of those, and then you're going to feel it right there for about the next three days. So those are really good exercises for one specific type of movement pattern. So we have to look at the strength to support the movement that the athlete needs. 
We have to have exercises that benefit those athletes, okay, benefit those sports. We'll go through full periodization. So each exercise that we choose is for a purpose, and the amount of times and the amount of load that you have to do is for a purpose as well. And then when we finish all of our weight training, we have to have regeneration. Regeneration, recovery and regeneration. Helping our body to create muscle that we've just degraded and worn out, which is why you get sore. Everybody knows after you train, you get sore, right? Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. After you get sore, you have microscopic tears all over your body. And those muscles, that's what's causing the soreness. And you need to heal those up as quickly as you can. So we have lots of targeted tools in order to do that with. Okay? That's why we had to find a partner like Skills who could not only give us the tools to use for regeneration or for mobility or for stability, these tools, they actually, the, 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 when I showed you the picture of the building, the guy laying down the phone, I said my office is right there and Jen's upstairs. We're two different companies in the same building. So if there's a product that I need, I can say, you know what would really work for me is if I had a massage trigger point ball like this, where an athlete could really get in and get targeted, but at the same time, there needs to be some type of rope to it. So maybe we could do also some stretching things with this one tool. They go, okay, well, give me a week and I'll have you another product. They go in, they build the product, bring it back to us and say, how would you change it? How would you make it better? So that's what this company does. That's what Skills does. <clears throat> very, very targeted tools to be able to help us restore and maintain tissue quality. And then we have active recovery and hydrotherapy. It's a big part of what we do. You know, you guys have beautiful ocean that's surrounding you, so get in it, right? Utilize it. It's fantastic. Our, Facilities are in the desert, so we have to we have concrete pools and oceans at this point. Okay, but we put this pool right here is at about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and these are at about 85, and then that one's at uh, outside temperature. So we have cold pools, hot pools, and then room temperature pools. We can work on healing the body up, getting the body ready for training or competition, and also exercising inside the, uh, the swimming pools as well. So. You see how the training system is built together. We talked about each one of those components of our training session. Prepare the athlete for movement after we figured out what things we need inside of our system. Prepare the athlete for movement, then go ahead and take them through their movement preparation session, plyometric ability, their movement skills, that involves medicine ball work, that's great, strength and power, ESD, energy system development, just means targeted, conditioning. So if you play basketball and it's a stop and start sport, we need to condition you for that. Okay? It doesn't necessarily, uh, for my athletes, I'm not going to take a, an American football player and make him run five miles. It doesn't necessarily correspond with what they need to do on the field. It might, for basketball, there might be some correspondence there. So each sport has to have specific ways to develop the energy systems necessary to play that sport, and then regeneration. Regeneration is, um, like I said, the, one of the most impactful, as well as nutrition. Okay? So when we tie all that together, we get our system of development. And because we have our system there, I know if I want to do movement preparation, I've already thought about what tools I need, so I can go ahead and select the tools that I want to use in order to accomplish those movements, right? These things are easy for us. That's why we had to partner with a company like Skills, and that's why Agility Sports is doing something that's so fantastic for this area and being able to bring this equipment down here and be able for people like Ronald and, and Gregory to be able to, to use these types of equipment in order to make this island better at sports, and it will. I can promise you that. Okay. These are, these are very important things for us to all talk to you guys about, and, and uh, I have a couple of my colleagues that are going to come up and, and let you guys see the products as well. Before we do that, are there any questions? Yes, sir. Yes. So 
you have, good question. So you have a couple of things that can go on. Number one, it can be adaptation that could have caused that issue. Or some people are born with bony structural differences. If you are born with bony structural differences, there's only so much you can change because that's, that's if it's soft tissue, muscles and ligaments and tendons and fascia, versus hard structure, which would be bone, you can't change bone very much, but you can change soft tissue. So there would be some things that we could implement that would help that if it's soft tissue related, if it's bony structure related, and we're still going to try and give you as much help as possible, and you can still make all the soft tissue changes around the hard structure as well. Uh, but some things you can't change, some things you can't. That's just the nature of the body. Good question. Yes, ma'am. So the um, transcendental mission says that the way you use hinge and squats, <coughs> my chance something about five minutes. And in our glute activation section of movement prep. So with mini bands, we usually take about five minutes in total. So if you do the exercise for more than five minutes, what would be the consequence? Well, you have glute activation and then glute fatigue. Okay. So if we put mini bands on everyone and, and Ronald and Gregory take you guys outside and uh, they put you through 20 minutes worth of glute activation, you will not be able to walk very well. Right. So if we go from that to sport, your muscle is going to be too fatigued for you to actually play the sport. So what we're trying to do is send a signal, flip the light switch on, right? Nobody wants a sore butt the whole time you're trying to practice. It doesn't make any sense. So we just we want to flip the light switch on so that your body knows which muscle groups they're using, not to pre-fatigue out. Good. Thank you. You got it. Anything else? What else? Okay. All right. Graham, do you mind coming up? And Jen. Jen, come up too. Ooh. Hi, everyone. This is Graham from Agility Sports and then Jen from Skills. They're going to talk to you guys about some of the product. All right. So, has anyone been to San Diego, California? No. Everyone should go. So, that is where we're based. Uh, a lot of those pictures are from our facility. We are the sixth and final Exos facility in plans right now and we opened our facility doors in 2012. We teamed up with this group. We are the hardware to their software. Everything that he's taking you through, from speed hurdles, to power bands, to the recovery initiatives with our Accu products and our rollers, everything they have melds perfectly with their methodology, so there's four pillars. Every time we create a product of skills, we give it to Brent's team. We give it to the top athletes in the world, and we say, beat it up, break it up, let us know how this fits into your training system. So we develop Brent's toolbox to train all of these athletes. We just had uh, Russell Wilson from the Seattle Seahawks tell us how much he loves his barrel roller, just because he plays in pain all the time. Recovery is not spoken about enough. I could have extended my career and could have played longer, loved it, but I had a recovery program like what Brent offers with Exos. So our goal here is with the initiatives from EXOS and the high performance team you guys have on Trinidad, we want to make sure that we are educating you guys to be the best athletes you can be, to be the best in every aspect of your lives. If you do this stuff, you'll just feel better when you wake up in the morning. So any of these products, um, Graham is going to take you through and we'll explain where you can get them here on the island as I break things, no big deal. They're durable. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys want to come up at the end and test some things out, get your hands on. There's nothing more than I can say that'll tell you more about Skills product than getting your hands on it, giving a test of it, and trying it with the excess methodologies that the team here is bringing. Yeah, so at Agility Sports, we take a very consultative approach to um, you know outfitting organizations, programs with with the tools that Skills and Exos provide. So. I've been working closely with Rod, with Roger, uh, with Ronald over the last uh, few weeks to kind of identify uh, teams and what you need and how we're gonna we're gonna get this stuff in your hands sooner than later. So I reckon the warm warm up and recovery is a good a good place to start. Uh, so these are the new skills uh, barrel rollers and uh, they're foam rollers and they're a little bit different to all the other rollers that you'll see on the market because. Uh, they allow the athlete to choose uh, density. So you'll find that most of the other rollers on the market are, are all one dens density. 
they've brought in the inner core. These ones are power core. You'll see that, that the core is, is pretty much similar throughout each roller. But we, we allow the athlete to choose the dens density. So you'll have uh, the, the red. So anything that scales and exos does is uh, color coded. So you have red, uh, yellow, and black. It says uh, yellow is light, red is, is firm, and black is most often extra firm. So you'll have a, fo a firm foam, foam roller here, and you'll have a, a very soft foam roller for, for the athletes who experience a lot of pain when they're rolling. And you'll have an extra firm uh, foam yeah. roller uh, for rolling purposes. For we'll pass these around so you guys can see. When we're talking about the different densities, these are the different barometers. So if you're a strong, very muscular athlete, you're probably going to want to go with an extra firm. If you are a slighter athlete, typically a female, and you don't want to really grind your muscles out, you would try the soft roller. Question? All right, um, so, I love it, I love it. Trigger point therapy. Sorry? Trigger point therapy. Trigger point therapy, yes, because we actually have a lot of products that are working on myofascial release to release those tightened muscle areas. So this is our AccuBall. And we also just came out with a cold AccuBall. They have a titanium core in the cold one, so you can put it in the freezer, it stays cold for four hours, and you can do the trigger point with the cold. This is the one that doesn't have any cold, and this you can use, I mean, I take this everywhere I go, anytime. I use it on my neck, you can use it on your shoulders. Also, in terms there are, of trigger there are, point. There are a lot of different variations of, of the product for, for trigger yes, point. Do the ones, are you talking about like the rumble roller that has a little bit more? No. Actually, what, in our research and our partnerships with our athletes, we found out that that doesn't necessarily add any great benefit to the muscle rolling. That it's really the way you're rolling, the movements you're making, and, and the regimen that you have. So not, those things are painful too. Have you tried that? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> tough. <laughs> In addition to uh, one of the really cool things that we did with EXOS is I think Brian remembers when this was two tennis balls taped together with, I think, duct tape. Yeah, duct tape, duct tape, tape or athletic balls. tape. And it was the peanut. And we saw that thing and we were horrified and we laughed. And we created and we said, give us some time, tell us what you're using this for, and we will create an active point. That thing is dense, it gets your trigger points, it gets your myofascial release. And from there, that was the first of many active products that came from our working with EXOS. How many of you have ever taken a sock with a tennis ball or a golf ball, slapped it up against the wall, and tried to get with your gym sock the right kind of rolling and release in your shoulders? Well, the sock method is dead. We've created a product now that of course does that. So you get to keep both pairs of your socks now. Um, this is, again, the density for what you're doing. You can trigger different muscles, different parts. This is a lighter density ball, you feel the rubber inside. This is a little hard ball, very, very uh, dense. You put them together, you have another three density program you can use. I hope you're good at catching as we see you. And this is more or less the same thing. This is, this is dual density as well, and it's not slip. So you can use it on the floor, under the foot. Um, so this is, this is like cricket size ball uh, density, and this is golf ball size and density. And it can be used also for, for that trick point release. So the knob comes out of the ball, and you can do it for uh, deep tissue massage. So we also offer a massage bar. A lot of people have seen the tiger tail. This is an improvement on that. We took the handles of this thing. If anybody rides bikes, BMX, I heard you're a biker. There you go. These are based off of your handles. So these are the ergonomic handles, so you can really get in and dig and get your therapy on, get your massage on. So these are the ergonomic handles. I'm going to start with someone else. You can try everything. Okay, this is, this is another variation. This is called the Acu Roller, so it's used for uh, muscle maintenance and rolling as well. And it's got these straps that allow you to uh, to get to areas that you couldn't uh, get to in the past for this is a reconfigure. I call this thing the massage kebab because these are reconfigurable on the sticks. So if there's any, yeah, massage kebab, you will remember that. So if anyone gets a massage kebab, you can take everything that's actually the Acu Roller, and these totally change. So you can configure this to whatever you want to do. That's one of the things that's really cool. You can loop this around your foot and get some crazy stretching going. There's a lot of versatility in our products, 
and it also pairs perfectly well with our website. If you go to our website, our YouTube channel, all the content you have is there. There's no point in giving an athlete. How many of you have coached athletes? Has anybody coached in here? How many of you have given a product or anything or a drill and they just have no idea what to do with it? That is pointless. We want to use the EXOS methodology to create the education for you to train to be the best athlete, the best, healthiest person that you can be. And that's why we're here bringing the product to Trinidad to educate and to get you guys to be the best athletes you can be down here. Anybody use reaction balls? Anybody know what these are? Yeah. Yeah. So. Good so. Place to Let's yeah. Put exactly. Here. So they're good for uh, for use in, in just about any sport, especially in sports like cricket, where you need quick, quick, uh, quick reaction time. Yeah. So some of our other products, in addition to what Greg was talking about, we have the speed and agility part of our stuff. These are our new speed hurdles. In the in the slideshow, you saw that we had hurdles that had a rounded uh, a rounded bottom. We're moving towards these six X turtles. Six of them come in a package. You cannot break this thing. If you step on it, it's not going to come up and stab you. If you land on it, it's not going to break your ankle. You're not going to slip. You're not going to trip. This. about here today it's about building a system and then improving your tools right everybody understand that you have to have the knowledge to understand what to do with the tools that you're given and then once you understand that create better tools and that's what these companies have allowed us to do and we want to thank you guys for letting us come here today and, and share this with you thank you very much thank you. Okay, everyone, uh, thanks for, for being such an attentive audience. Um, on behalf of the University of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, we'd like to say thank you very much for taking your time to be here. We just have a small presentation that we'd like to make. I'd like to call on Mr. Rogers. Um, he has something that you'd like to present to Jen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to This is really for you to remember the University of Trent to be on, on behalf of all the students and staff here. And we have one for Mr. Calloway. Bring it down, just present it. Or if I could ask one of our high performance coaches, any volunteers, preferably a female coach. This is our table tennis coach, Ms. Alina Edwards, champion table tennis player, and our high performance table tennis coach. She will present on behalf of the Thank you very so much. much. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Um, so that's it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you've heard it in terms of sport and you know the type of training and programs required for you to be the best that you can be. Everything as you realize, as you go higher in terms of your particular level and your particular discipline, there's a great focus on the details and, and, and that is what uh, Mr. Callaway was speaking about in terms of being very sport specific, understanding what your sport demands and training to be very efficient and productive in those regards. Alright, so thanks again on behalf of the university. 
We do hope that you all have enjoyed this short presentation and I'm sure Mr. Rogers will introduce some of these products and the methodology in terms of your training, more so the high performance athletes. So thanks again.